Hello everyone, today I'm going to make a video on uh, using Clonezilla to clone uh, a drive from one computer to another computer using a network. Uh, I'm just going to use a straight through patch, patch cable like this uh, to connect the two computers together. Uh, you know, for the most part that should work for you. Both these computers have gigabit network cards which have a auto negotiating uh, feature on both of them so they don't require you to connect them to a switch. Um, but if you have an older card or if you're going to do this across a network, well then if you have two uh, cables like that connected to either a switch like this one here or which I think I paid around 10 bucks for or if you're going to use, uh, you can use a uh, router as well to connect the two, uh, you know, this will work as well. But it's, it's up to you how you do it. Um, you know, I'm not going to show you how to do the uh, networking connection because it's pretty well the same basically connect the network cable to this one and connect the network cable to this one and then to your router and the two computers should talk to each other uh, router or switch that is so but I'm going to keep it simple for this the sake of this uh, and this video I'm just going to do this that's it so a cable between the two computers two USB uh, drives I'm just going to copy from the source computer to the target computer using the network cable and show you how to configure both of those computers to have that happen as well as show you it happening. Okay here we are at my boot screen. I've got the uh, prompt here to hit escape for the startup menu. I'm going to do that. I have the USB key in the drive. Sorry in the uh, port, USB port. So I hit escape and of course I get my boot uh, uh, startup menu. I'm going to hit F9 for the boot device options. So you choose that and it may be different on your computer. It'll be different on the uh, Acer uh, netbook that I'm using as well. I'm going to choose the SanDisk uh, Cruiser Glide which is the uh, Clonezilla drive that I have. So I hit that and then we get the various options that I have here and I'm going to System Tools and down to Clonezilla. And here we have all the different options. Now realize you have 25 seconds here unless you move the uh, selection bar by using your cursor keys. Uh, now I'm going to choose the other modes of Clonezilla Live as I like to run it uh, in a different mode and I'll show you what that is here. So I choose that. Then you'll see down here Clonezilla Zilla Live to RAM. Boot uh, media can be removed later. So what that does is it allows you to take the drives a USB drive out of this, the uh, port or leave it in there and copy it as it uh, once it's done uh, booting up it's all the data and Clonezilla is loaded into RAM and the key is no longer needed. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to choose that on both machines. So let's go here. Go into the RAM. Choose that. And we'll wait for it to boot up here. Now I'm doing this through a LAN cable. Uh, I don't suggest doing this with wireless. I mean, you can try it, but it's it's not an easy thing to configure to get to work. So, uh, I suggest using just a LAN cable like I'm using. using. All right, and you get the uh, uh, which language you prefer. Of course, I prefer English, so I'm going to hit enter here, and then ask you about the key map. We're not going to change that unless you have a different uh, language keyboard, like a French one. Don't touch that. Just hit enter. And we're into the Clonezilla. You have the two options. You have the Start Clonezilla and you have the Enter Shell. Well, we're going to start the Clonezilla here. And then you get the option to go from device to image or device to device. Well, I'm going to go from device to device. And beginner mode is fine with me. Uh, if you want to go into the expert mode, you can change the uh, various options there. Um, then we're going to go uh, disk to remote disk. You have all uh, four or five, or sorry, five different options there and uh, we're, I'm doing a clone from a disk to a disk but I'm going from disk to remote so I'm choosing that option. Then you get the option of DHCP or static. Now you can use DHCP if your uh, router or your network configuration or your network uh, um, setup has a DHCP server on it. Uh, since I'm going static, I'm, I'm it's in, you know, going from one, using a cable between one computer and another, I'm just going to use the static settings. And uh, so we're going to choose that here. And 
It comes with a default number of 192.168.120.1 and that's fine for this configuration because basically all we need is an IP address. So uh, any IP address will do as long as you know what you're dealing with. So we'll go with a default which is 120.1 or so 192.168.120.1. So hit OK on that. Your subnet mask, go with the default there as well. And uh, as far as a default gateway, you don't even need one here. Uh, I'm going straight through, uh, I'm using a straight through cable here so I don't need to use a gateway at all. And if your, comput your computer is on the same uh, network as this computer, uh, you shouldn't need one either. So I'm just going to do that blank. And uh, same with the name server, just erase it. You don't need it. And hit OK. Now, if you want, you can use those two uh, options if you're going across networks, but we're not going to get into that. So leave the two last options blank. And hit OK. All right, and then it, it configures the network card on this computer, and then it gives you the option. Well, what do you want to copy? Well, we got the one terabyte drive, which is the Toshiba drive inside this machine. We're not going to copy that. That just would take forever. Um, and then we have the, the uh, SDB uh, Cruiser Glide Sand Disk Cruiser drive that I booted up the computer with. That's why I boot in the RAM because uh, it allows me to use that uh, drive as a um, you know imaging source or a, a clone source. Uh, I, up to you how you do that, but basically that's what I'm going to do. And that's that's what I'm going to clone. I'm going to clone the the drive that I actually booted this computer with. So I'll hit OK on that. And again, be very, very careful what you're cloning uh, from and to, because uh, if you mess up, you can really, uh, you know, oh, you're going to overwrite data and then lose data. So I'm just going to choose the uh, AK Cruiser Glide, Glide, Glide SanDisk. And, you know, the program is very clear as to what you're actually picking, so you shouldn't have an issue. Okay, and then you have the error checking wall. I know there's nothing wrong with my drive. If you suspect you got a bad drive or there's something wrong with it or maybe you mounted this incorrectly, you can choose the uh, interactive check or the auto check. But again, be careful with that because if you don't know what you're doing, you can actually lose data. So skip to checking. Okay. So now it says, hey, I'm ready to go now. Um, next time you want to run this command, you can just use this command that's listed down here. Uh, I don't care because I'll always use the... Uh, um, what do you call it, configuration menu to get this done. So it's up to you whether you copy that or not. I'm going to hit enter. Now we get into the nitty gritty. Um, down here in this yellow area is all the information you need to know to uh, copy this uh, drive from uh, this computer to the other computer. So basically at this point what you need to do is follow the directions here. So what we're going to do in the other computer is boot it up, use the uh, command prompt or the uh, shell uh, option instead of the clonezilla option, uh, which will then ri run these, this uh, command in, and that should copy that, oh, sorry, these commands in, and that should copy that drive onto your um, target computer. So I'll uh, take a picture of this here. Next, we're going to go to the other computer and boot it up with the uh, uh, USB key. All right, here we are at my Acer boot screen on my netbook. My Acer, Acer is Aspire 1. Obviously, it's different than my HP. I get different options for the boot options. I get F2 to go to setup and F12 to change the boot order. So I'm going to go to F12. And then we enter the boot device menu. And as you can see, the hard drive is the first one to go. Uh, to start and so we're going to choose the second one which is my USB drive, my SanDisk Cruiser Edge, where my clonezilla is and I'm just going to hit enter here. Then we're going to go to system tools, enter there, then down to clonezilla live and here we have another menu to choose from and I always like choosing the uh, other modes of Clonezilla Live and that's because I get the option to boot the whole thing into RAM, therefore freeing up every drive on my computer uh, to clone or copy, including the USB drive that I used to boot with. So uh, I'm going to do that right now. And the fourth option down you'll see says Clonezilla Live to RAM. So that's the one we want. Boot media can be removed later. So I'm going to hit enter here and wait for the boot process. 
Okay, we're at the language selection. Of course, I'm going to choose English. You choose what you need to. So hit enter here. Then you go into the key map. Um, my keyboard is a standard English keyboard, so I don't need to change this. If you do, well, uh, you can change it by uh, going through these uh, through this list. But I'm just hit, going to hit enter here for my standard keyboard. All right, and here we are at the Clonezilla uh, page. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to ch change it to enter shell. Again, this is the target computer, so we need to put in uh, shell commands to get this to work. So hit enter there. And then you get, go into uh, four options. The third one, which is CMD, which is command where we need to go. So now we're in the command line prompt. And here we're going to type in uh, first sudo space su uh, space dash. And that is on the other screen of, of your other computer if you need to know exactly how that looks. So I'm just typing it in here. All right, enter, and nothing much happens. But basically, what's happened is you've become, if you look at the at the uh, left there, you become root, which means you're the administrator for this machine at this point. Now, uh, one of the things that it doesn't show you on the uh, source machine in the command line instructions is that it says, "Hey, you know, uh, type in this command, and uh, you'll be uh, putting it on the target uh, uh, drive." Well. We don't know what the target drive is called on this machine. So first thing we need to do here is type in uh, one command called parted, P-A-R-T-E-D, and then space, and then the dash and the L for list. Now parted will tell you what uh, drives are in your machine and it will even tell you what they're called. As you can see here, the Hitachi uh, 160 gig hard drive is the SDA hard drive, okay? And it's listed right there as SDA. Now, if you look down further, you'll see the SanDisk Cruiser Edge, and it says it's SDB. You don't need to worry about the dev. The computer knows what ed, where it is just by typing in either SDA or SDB. So now that we know that our, our eight gig USB drive is the um, SDB, we can move on. So just note that. Next, we've got to set up the network configuration on this computer. So that's type in OCS-Live-NETCFG. So net config or NETCFG. And then hit enter. And then you get the familiar network configuration screen. We'll go down to static here. And you see that this is giving you the same IP address, the 192.168.120.1. Well, we, don't, we can't have the same IP address on the, on the network as the other machine. If we do, you're going to have a conflict. So here, just put in 2 or 10, or anything other than 1, up to 254. And, uh, you know, 2, two to whatever, uh, 20 or 50, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you don't go uh, higher than 254. Enter. Then we get 255, 255, 255.0 as the network mask. We stay with that. Enter. Uh, gateway doesn't matter, so I just erase it. And uh, name server doesn't matter, so I just erased it. So that's it for the network configuration. We're done there. Next, if you look at your uh, source screen, it gives you the command that you need to put in to actually have this copy over. Now, we know that it's SDB because we already checked that using the parted space dash L command. So here we're going to type in that command from the other side and then put SDB at the end. So what it is, looking at the other screen, is OCS dash on the fly and space dash S space 192.168.120.1. Now that's the IP address of the other machine. And it's listed there on the uh, actual command itself. Then we're going to hit, uh, hit space, then dash again, and T. And then here's where your SDB comes in. So SDB, right? We know that that's where the 8 gig drive is. So now we hit enter and the process begins. Now it does warn you that 
what it's going to do is wipe out that drive. It says, you know, it says warning, 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 warning. The existing data on this hard disk partition will be overwritten. All existing data will be lost on SDB. And it, it tells you the machine AOA150, which is what it is. And then you look down and you see that it says uh, SDB uh, 8 gig drive and SDB1. So it doesn't matter. Basically, we know we're overwriting the uh, 8 gig cru cruiser edge drive, which is what we wanted to do. Are you sure you want to continue? Of course, yes. Be sure you want to continue. Be sure you're, you're copying to the right drive. Otherwise, you're going to lose data. Okay, once again, it warns you. It's going to overwrite everything on SDB. Gotcha. I understand. So it's very friendly that way. Now, the other machine, the uh, source machine, is doing nothing but sitting there and waiting. It actually says on the bottom, waiting for target machine to connect. Now, the target machine will actually connect, and it won't show you that till the end, but I'll give you an example of that while it's happening. So, uh, here it says, do you want to clone the bootloader, uh, execute, executable code area, blah, blah, blah to SDB. Yes, you do, because this is a bootable drive and you need a bootloader to, to run a bootable drive. So I'm going to hit yes here. And then the process begins. And if your network cards have lights, you'll see that uh, at this point the lights begin flashing back and forth and uh, that you're actually getting some activity there. So we'll let this uh, go through. I'm going to slide this over to the other machine so you can see that it's still just sitting there with the same command waiting for the other for target machine to connect so actually this does not actually uh, change at all until the process ends on the other machine at which point the uh, uh, computer on on the other side says well this the source computer says finished and I'll show you that when it's finished all right, now we're nearing the end. Uh, it says 100% of the data has gone through, syncing, and and now we've got three choices. Power off, uh, reboot, or enter the command line prompt. Well, we're done uh, copying at this point, so we can actually reboot and test the uh, drive at this point. And I want to show you over here on the source machine that it no longer says waiting for the other machine. It just says, uh, you know, uh, we're done here, press enter to continue. Um, so basically at this point it says uh, that waiting for the source machine to connect uh, line is actually says done at the end. And it only says that at the, at the end of the process when the other machine tells it that it is finished. So let's just reboot this machine, make sure this came out right. It uh, choose number one, uh, number one, reboot, and it's going through the, the reboot process. Once again, I got to choose F12. There we go, and we go down to my Sandus Cruiser drive, and there we are. Fully copied all the system tools, Clonezilla again, and. We are off to the races to the same with the same cut with a copy of the original from the uh, source on the target and perfectly uh, cloned over. So that's how you clone a drive using Clonezilla through the network. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.